Velocitas Erradico. Sounds like the sort of thing Harry Potter might say when fighting Voldemort, which would be quite apt as the translation of Velocitas Erradico is quickly get rid, or in the vernacular, speed kills, and is the motto for the no less futuristic US Navy electromagnetic railgun project. Now, before we set the comments on fire about the Latin, it seems that Velocitas Eradicat would be a better translation of speed kills, but I'll leave it to you Latin scholars out there to let me know in the comments. So back to the railgun. Now, some might be saying, why do we need a new gun? We have precision guided missiles that can travel thousands of kilometers and the massive 16 and 18 inch guns used in the World War II class battleships have been made almost obsolete by the aforementioned missiles and the rest can be taken care of by aircraft. In World War II, the weaponry was cheap and easy to make. Tens of thousands of planes and tanks and millions of bombs and shells were produced. The US won the war because they could out-manufacture the Germans and the Japanese whilst keeping their manufacturing base safe. Modern warfare is now about keeping the action at arm's length whilst keeping troops off the ground where possible. Carpet bombing and massive artillery bombardments of large areas doesn't always produce victories as was seen in Vietnam. Today, precision weapons reduce collateral damage, but remote controlled drones, high-tech planes and guided missiles are not only extremely expensive to buy, but also to develop in the first place. The US has a stockpile of around about 3,500 cruise missiles at about $800,000 each. And these can't be mass produced like the old style shells. The same also applies to things like new planes, but at much higher costs. As a way to provide a lower cost fire support with less reliance on air power or expensive missiles, the US Navy was looking for a way of firing hundreds or thousands of low cost guided ordnance reaching up to 200 miles or 320 kilometers from the beach onto thousands of targets a day. Conventional large naval guns are limited by the rate of gas expansion from the explosive used to propel the projectile, giving them a range of around 45 kilometers, but with muzzle velocities of around 800 meters per second. A kinetic tank round has a muzzle velocity of up to 1900 meters per second but has a range of only a few kilometers. The goal of a railgun is to deliver a guided projectile, which is currently kinetic, but could be explosive in the future, at around 2,500 meters per second, at up to 200 miles or 320 kilometers, although the current technology, the range is around 120 kilometers. The current generation of electromagnetic railguns can accelerate a 10 kilogram projectile from zero to more than Mach 6 in just 10 milliseconds. Emerging from a barrel and a plume of fire, these are as close as you can get to man-made meteorites, raining down on enemy targets far beyond the horizon. Railguns might appear to be futuristic weapons, but the idea first appeared almost 100 years ago when the French inventor Louis Octave Fouchon Villepli submitted a patent for electrical apparatus for propelling projectiles in 1919. By 1944, the Nazis had drawn up more advanced plans for an anti-aircraft railgun that would use as much power as a large city. That was, however, never built. But it caused a great deal of interest when the plans were discovered after the war. The railgun works because of the Lorentz force discovered by engineers and mathematicians in the 19th century and named after the Dutch Nobel Prize winning physicist the physics behind a railgun is simple enough to be demonstrated by a home-built railgun. Two parallel electrically conductive rails are connected to a large power source. One rail has a positive charge, the other rail a negative charge. To fire the gun, a moving armature or bridge connects the two, completing the circuit. This armature can be either a metal projectile or a thin film on the back of a non-metallic shell that carries the current across a plasma arc. When the electrical energy travels through the circuit, a very strong magnetic field is created and pushes the projectile down the barrel. In the video, the squarish looking object being loaded into the gun is the sabo with the moving armature, and the projectile is placed inside that. 
when the sabot exits the barrel, it breaks apart, leaving the projectile, which has been accelerated to around 2,500 meters per second. The amount of electrical power discharge during a firing is around 5 million amps at 1,200 volts for about 5 milliseconds, which works out at around 30 megajoules of power. In theory, this force is scalable and could allow for an on-demand, almost limitless acceleration. But in early railgun prototypes, the forces were so great that it caused the rails to move apart, creating intense plasma arcing and friction that destroyed the rails and the barrel, making repairs necessary after every shot. Engineers have continued to work on the technology and the electromagnetic weaponry and propulsion are looking more and more attractive. For the same reason, laser weapons have also seen significant investment in the recent decades, famously as a way to shoot down incoming ICBMs. A high-power railgun could do the same job, and so in 2005, the American Office for Naval Research, or the ONR, contracted BAE systems to produce a prototype. The electromagnetic laboratory railgun was the result. It uses a 25 megawatt power plant, enough to power almost 19,000 homes to create pulses of capacitor-based power. Phase two of BAE's contract began in 2012, working towards a railgun with a repeat fire capability. To achieve this, BAE's barrel design uses advanced materials to resist ablation and fire five rounds per minute. The range of the weapon will be around 125 miles or 200 kilometers, firing at speeds of up to 5,600 miles an hour and 9,000 kilometers per hour with high accuracy. Firing at this rate, the total power of the weapon will be 32 megajoules of muzzle energy per minute. To achieve the 200 mile or 320 kilometer range, the energy required will be around 64 megajoules, but as yet, there aren't the high power capacitors or materials available to survive the multiple firings per minute. But this will undoubtedly be developed as time goes by. Currently only the Zumwalt class destroyers of the US Navy with their 78 megawatts of power have enough capacity to power the 32 megajoule railguns, but other ships are looking at being upgraded. General Atomics have also produced a version called the Blitzer which it's looking to make both land and ship based. Land bombardments aren't the only use the Navy is looking at. Because the speed of a projectile is so high, it could intercept an incoming supersonic anti-ship cruise missile at a distance much farther away than relying upon traditional anti-missile systems or phalanx guns. This ability could also be used against planes or even ballistic missiles. By having a proximity exploding projectile, it doesn't have to score a direct hit. It explodes just before interception to create a cloud of hypersonic shrapnel to hit a much larger target area. Another advantage is that the railgun's projectiles are compact. A ship could hold enough to carry out more shore bombardments than an aircraft carrier full of planes. With compact ammunition, the practical scale of a railgun weapon becomes more viable and on extended operations gives it a huge advantage in firepower. Another advantage of kinetic weapons without warheads is that if a ship were to be hit, there is much less chance of a catastrophic ammo explosion, like those which destroyed ships in the past like the HMS Hood and the HMS Barham. In the future, railguns might be miniaturized further and find their way onto tanks and aircraft. But as a ground-based platform, there are non-military uses that could accelerate the development of a useful working railguns. At NASA's Applied Physics Laboratory at the Kennedy Space Center, studies investigating using electromagnetic propulsion to accelerate a wedge-shaped spacecraft to Mach 10 on a trajectory high into the atmosphere. Then the spacecraft's onboard propulsion would engage to circularize, delivering a payload into orbit for a fraction of the cost of a traditional launch. NASA has a significant body of existing technology to draw on, such as the X-43 or the X-51 scramjet-powered vehicles, which have been shown to work in the real world. Whether for peaceful or destructive applications, the investment in railgun technology is likely to make its way from science fiction into practical use in the next decade or so. Without a doubt, these machines will put on a spectacular show as they accelerate into an electrified future. So, thanks for watching. I'd just like to say that this episode's shirt was the Trip Paisley Surf by Madcap England and is available from Atom Retro with worldwide shipping from here in the UK. 
Don't forget we also have the Curious Droid Facebook page and I'd also like to thank all of our patrons for their ongoing support. And if you would like to become a patron, then you can find out more on the link now showing. So as always, thanks again for watching and please subscribe, rate and share. <laughs>